Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, this is again another question paper, June 11. Sorry, June 22, question number 11. And this is the second video on from question number 21 to 40. Now, question number 21, the diagram shows some structures in the human skin. Now, just a quick revision of the skin. You know, why is the hair follicle? Z is the uh, blood vessels. Now, I'm just going to point something out to you because in another MCQ, what we could have was, you see, this is now the blood vessels. These are the blood vessels. Now, if they had pointed to this area was X, then it would be a blood vessel, but then they're pointing to X, which is the sweat gland. So this is another part of the sweat gland. So you see this, if I had to color it, this is the sweat gland. So this is the sweat gland. So please see there is a blood supply to the sweat gland as every organ of the body has a blood supply, except the cornea and the lens, which do not have a blood supply. So please understand this is that they were asking you for, so that is why the answer is C because X is the sweat gland and uh, Y is the hair follicle and Z is the blood vessel. Now coming to question number 22, the graph shows changes in a person's body temperature plotted against time. <clears throat> now what causes the changes in body temperature in periods one and two? So it's only asking about this time, period one in which the temperature is rising from 37 to 39 daily. And then they're asking you about period two in which the temperature is returning to normal. So period one, it can't be to reduced air temperature. Your temperature does not rise. Your temperature is maintained. Even if you enter this cold room, your temperature is going to be maintained. If you enter a hot room, even then it's going to be maintained. So that is why the answer is C is because period one is vigorous exercise and period two is actually you're sweating. And that is the latent heat of vaporization when the sweat evaporates it cools the body down. When the sweat evaporates, it cools the body down. Shivering would be only if you, if somebody puts you in uh, something very cold. You've gone uh, ice skating and you fall into a pond of ice water. So that would be, then that would result in shivering. Uh, the diagram shows the cross section of the human brain. If structure X is damaged, which body functions may be effective? Now, you know, there's a cerebellum. So the answer is D, which is a control of movement, posture, and balance. Which diagram shows how light from a distant object is focused on the retina to form a clear image. So you remember my mnemonic distance less convex. So the less convex ones are this and this. But why is this wrong? Because the, it's crossing over here. This is wrong. It has to form an image on the fovea. This is the fovea. So that is why the answer is A. Then question number 25, the graph shows the changing blood glucose concentration in one person over 24 hours. Key, these are the points there, there the meat is, uh, sorry, meat has been eaten. So meat was eaten here, here, and here. And we are seeing uh, the changing blood glucose concentration in one person over 24 hours. You see, when such a question comes, you have to understand is it says meal taken. No, sorry, I said meat in the beginning. So I said meal taken. Meal means you've had bread, roti, chawal, rice, something, biryani maybe. So you took the meal, your blood glucose was down. And then here you took the meal, the blood glucose has gone up. And then it has gone down. And then you took a meal and then again it has gone up and then it goes down. So which statement... Explain the shape of the graph. After each meal, insulin has been released because that is what results in the blood glucose oscillating, increasing, then decreasing, increasing, then decreasing. After each meal, adrenaline is released. No, adrenaline is released in a stressful situation like fight, fright, and flight situation. Before each meal, adrenaline is the adrenaline though, was totally wrong. So you knew adrenaline was wrong. Before each meal, insulin is released. No, insulin is released only when your blood glucose concentration rises. Your blood glucose is maintained between 80 and 120. So you say your blood glucose at this minute is 100 and you now have a piece of uh, a piece of uh, chocolate cake. Well, your blood glucose is rise. Only then insulin is going to be released. Why would insulin be released without any reason? So this is why the answer is B.
Now coming to question number 26. What happens when the triceps muscle of the forelimbs begins to contract? Triceps contract. The bicep will begin to relax. Now why are these others wrong? It starts to pull the radius bone upwards. The arm becomes bent at the elbow joint. Triceps contracts to straighten the arm at the elbow joint. The upper arm is raised above the shoulder. No, you're not talking about the shoulder joint. Question number 27. A patient has a bacterial infection. A sample of the bacteria is taken to identify which antibiotics to use for the patient. The sample from the patient is spread evenly on the agar plate. So this is the bacteria, which is the gray area. Right? Small paper is soaked in each four antibiotics. So we've got these are the four antibiotics. This, this, this. Four antibiotics have been placed. Small paper is soaked in each of four antibiotics are placed on the agar plate, which is kept warm overnight. The diagram shows the results of the test. The shaded area shows where the bacteria have grown. Which antibiotics? The shaded area is where the bacteria have grown. So this is the shaded area where the bacteria have grown. This is the area. But then you see these clear areas. So which 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 antibiotic is the most effective, which has the largest clear area? Because what has happened is the antibiotic has moved out and diffused out and it has destroyed the bacteria in this area. So there are no bacteria in this area. So this antibiotic is the best. Because antibiotics kill bacteria. This area is all the bacteria present, this area. So which antibiotic is the most effective? That's, that's the answer was A. Question number 28. Which row shows some of the structures found in bacteria, fungi and viruses? Bacteria, fungi and viruses. Cell membrane is not... Cell wall is present in bacteria, so this would be wrong. Bacteria has a cell wall. Fungus has a cell wall. Viruses do not have a cell wall. So this is a wrong one. This is wrong. Then uh, nucleus. Nucleus bacteria do not have a nucleus. Again, this line is wrong as well. So we are only left with uh, four protein coat. Yes, viruses have a protein coat. So that means one is correct and four is correct. That is why D is correct. Question number 29. The graph shows the mass of penicillium grown in a fermenter and the mass of antibiotic produced. You see the penicillium is the fungus and the antibiotic that it keeps on producing. When is the penicillium producing antibiotic most rapidly at this point? The antibiotic level is rising. So here is the answer. So when it says when is the penicillium producing antibiotic most rapidly, you see the antibiotic level is 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 increasing a little bit on day then 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 there's a sharp increase, and then it gradually sort of uh, levels off, and this is the mass in arbitrary units. So the mass is increased, then there's a sharp increase, and then it sort of levels off. Uh, question thirty: The diagram shows the nitrogen cycle. In which stages of the nitrogen cycle are nitrogen fixing bacteria important? Nitrogen fixing bacteria are important. Now, the first thing I would look at it would be root nodules in leguminous. So the nitrogen in the air is taken up and root nodules. So it must be two. Two must be there. I would have sort of read through it like this. Now, what are the possible answers with two? Two and three, two and one. Now, what is one? Nitrates are taken up into nitrogen into the air. What happens? Why do nitrates convert to nitrogen in the air? Denitrifying bacteria, the enemies of farmers. Denitrifying bacteria. And three is what? Nitrogen to ammonium ions. Ammonification. Nitrogen in the atmosphere. Nitrogen and the ammonium ions are then converted by nitrifying bacteria to nitrates. Decomposition and uh, putrefication or decomposition. So that is why the answer is 2 and 3, which is B. Malaria is spread by mosquito, which acts as a vector for the disease. So that is why the answer is D, mosquito vector of the disease. Question number 32. 
what increases in the long term as a result of tropical deforestation when you cut down the trees what is going to happen cloud cover would be of course decreased because less transpiration less cloud cover less transpiration less humidity but the answer is what is increases so soil erosion is going to increase Soil fertility has nothing to do with deforestation. Yes, in a way it is because if the leaves of the tree fall down, that increases the soil fertility. But then if there is no forest, it says deforestation. So that's going to result in soil erosion. A very easy and direct question. Either you know it or you don't know it. The diagram shows a section through a bean seed. Which labeled part is the testa? Testa is this part. Is the outer seed coat is called the testa. So this is a seed. So what is B? B is the plumule. C is the radical, A is the cotyledons, where the food is stored. And this C radical is going to become the root. And the B, the plumule, is going to become the shoot. So just a quick revision as well. Question number 34. Which row shows the two hormones that are necessary for ovulation to occur? It has to be FSH and LH. You see, estrogen is required for the lining of the uterus and progesterone is required to maintain the lining, make it more spongy and vascular. So that is why the answer is D. The diagram shows the uh, female reproductive system. Where does fertilization take place? Everybody knows that it is in the OV duct or the fallopian tube where the ovum is released from the uh, ov ovary. And the sperm's deposit here are going to travel all this way and fertilization is going to take place in the outer one third of the OB duct. So it is going to be B. C is the cavity of the uterus. Uh, D is the vagina and A is the ovary. Question number 36. The diagram shows a developing fetus in the uterus. What is the liquid at X called? Very easy. Liquid at X is called the amniotic fluid. Can't be blood, can't be urine, can't be water. So the name of that fluid is amniotic fluid. Now, the question number 37, a little challenging. Uh, which human feature shows discontinuous variation? Discontinuous variation means either two or three or four types. Like blood groups, there are four types of blood groups. Discontinuous, either you are a tongue roller or you are a non-roller. So agility can be uh, very levels of agility. Somebody is less agile, medium, high level agility and something like that. Then body height is very, very variable. 5'2", 5'3", 5'4", 6'1", 6'2". Obesity, very variable. Many, many intermediate. You can be a little obese, a little medium obese, very obese, very, very, very obese. And of course, is the answer is D, which is sickle cell anemia. Now, this is a very, very interesting question, question number 38. You all struggle with these inherited questions, but I'll give you a very easy clue how to do them. Albinism is an inherited condition caused by a recessive allele. The diagram shows a family tree for a family affected by this condition, male with albinism and female with albinism. So these people who are albinisms are 9 and 11. So because it is a recessive condition, so they have to be this. Well, you can use any symbols. I'm not saying you use A. You can even say T or you can even say D or something like that. So these people are small a, small a. And this is also small a, small a. Now you have to see that the parents of 9 are 3 and 4. So they have to have one small a. Why they have to have one small a? Why? And these are the ones who are not affected. So they are the dominant people. So the people who do not have albinism are either going to be this or they are going to be this. Now, because this kid is this, so these parents have to be big A, small a. So understand that. First of all, choose what is the recessive condition. Sometimes they tell you what is the dominant condition. Then you have to know that the other situation is the recessive condition. So in this situation, now they have said individuals 9 and 11 have albinism. What is the chance that individual 10 is heterozygous? Now, individual 10 is a female and the parents, which I've just done, is this. So what are going to be the kids? The kids are going to be either AA or big A, small A or big A, small A 
and small a small a. Now, what is the chance that individual 10 is heterozygous? So, the chance that he is heterozygous is what? This is 2. And this is totally out of 3. So, 2 out of 3. 2 in 3. So, that is why the answer is C. So, being heterozygous, there is a 2 chance. 2 in 3. Or you could have said 2 out of... It's a little difficult because they are only talking of the homozy... They are only talking of the dominant trait. So, 2 in 3 is the one which is the answer. So, the answer to 38 is C. Question number 39. The number of wheat plants in a grass field was counted at monthly intervals. The table shows the results. So, we have ground cell, dog, plantain and dandelion. Since August 2020. Okay, so here we are talking about this one. August 2020. The field was mown regularly and used as a football pitch. From this information, which two weeds from this information, which two weeds are best adapted to survive in mown grass? Now you see, the figures here is 475 and now it is 0. The figure here is 730 and now it is 2. The figure here is 102 and now they are 1090. The figure here is 253 and now it is 987. So it is plantain and dandelion. So the answer is C. You see, what you had to see is you have to read the question and see, okay, after mowing the grass, which, which weeds started to grow more? How have the numbers increased? So this is what we have to understand. And the answer was C. Question number 40. Human insulin genes can be inserted into bacteria. The bacteria can then be cultured and will produce human insulin as a byproduct. What is it an advantage to a patient of using the source of insulin rather than insulin from animals? It can be used to prevent the development of diabetes. No, how can you use it? You, you, you are actually treating it with the insulin. You don't prevent it. You actually have diabetes and then you inject yourself with insulin. It allows the pancreas to regenerate. No, a person who has diabetes takes insulin for the rest of his life, whether he lives 10 years or 20 years or 30 years or 100 years. See, the insulin from animals has fewer side effects. We didn't get insulin from animals. We said, what is the advantage of the patient using insulin rather than insulin from animals? Animal insulin is, of course, with a high tolerance level and then it causes allergies and all that. So the answer is D. It is much cheaper to, uh, to produce. It is said advantage to a patient of using this source of insulin rather than using cow insulin or pig insulin was also used at one point in time. So you'd have to slaughter a cow, take out the pancreas, then of course extract it from the pancreas. It was a very, very long and tedious process, but we would get animal insulin. We would get cow insulin and pig insulin. So the reason it is much cheaper to produce, it is not going to cause any, you see, it said advantage using the bacterial insulin rather than the insulin from animals. So that completes this video and I hope this is all very helpful. Please do subscribe. Uh, we have to reach the 10,000 mark and thank you very much.